Siddharth Gautam was born in a Hindu family in 563 BC in Lumbini, Nepal. His biological mother was a woman named Maya. In Tibet, she is called Kyutrumla, but elsewhere also Maya Devi and Mahamaya. His biological father was the regent Shuddhodana Gautam. Siddhartha himself was married to Yashodhara and had a son with her, whom they called Rahula. Siddhartha Gautam died at the age of 80 years in Kushinagar in India. He realized already as a 14-year-old boy through his observations an enormous amount of misery as among many other things that very many human beings in all areas suffered, far from various diseases as well as from loneliness or from bad blows of fate, lived in abject poverty and starved which all could only with difficulty cope with. He also said that he had also observed how, in contrast to this, the healthy, well-fed and wealthy rich against all humanity exploited the simple people, kept many people in serfdom, abused them and were completely indifferent to all events, health problems epidemic problems, hunger, and the general unworthiness of life. The rich and otherwise well-off were very spoiled human beings who were afflicted with dissatisfaction, hatred, envy, or greed, as well as vices, addictions, and pleasure-seeking, just as many were also afflicted with ruthlessness and unscrupulousness towards the common people who treated themselves and did the very best for themselves and brought and spread absolutely nothing but misery for their fellow human beings. All that Siddharth told in this regard was indeed so and continued for a long time before minor improvements occurred. But this was only as a result of the fact that parts of the population followed his teaching, which he worked out in seven years and began to spread at the age of 21, after he had pulled himself together by his own strength and by the use of his intellect and reason, he had learnt a great deal. His newly created teachings then led to better living conditions for many of the human beings who became his followers, while others, however, who did not make an effort to follow his teachings, often degenerated, rotted, and eked out a miserable existence in slums. Asked about certain alleged true traditions that circulated in the 20th century that were read to him, Siddharth Gautam explained that much of it was not true, such as that his life, wisdom and distinctiveness had not been prophesied for him from birth, nor did his family hold a royal position. His family was not royal, but only a small noble family and his father a small region of the Shakya region. His own family consisted of his wife, Yashodhara, a lowly noble woman, his son, Rahula, as well as four daughters named Hasita, Abhaya, Nyana, and Gaurima, whom he all loved and respected, although girls and women were considered inferior in his time and were actually treated as bad and worthless goods. Siddharth considered both human genders equally important, but he was even more respectful 
of the female because it was life giving and life preserving without which life could not be born and would not exist Siddharth often left his family for days or for weeks and for 28 years he wandered around the country like an ascetic as a teacher teaching the human beings teaching them to find and understand his meditation method and the meaning of life and also that no god would help them because there was none so they had to help only themselves and free themselves from all sickness suffering strokes of fate and all evil and misfortune so he had not been an ascetic for so long and had not left his family as is wrongly handed down and according to his explanation he also did not make use of the teachings of other wise men and experienced human beings but only his own knowledge experiences and personality which he expressed clearly and unambiguously this just as he also clearly stated that he only practiced his own meditation and went his own way with regard to everything and anything and sought and evaluated the truth of all things himself and from this he gained detailed knowledge and a far reaching understanding of all things he found and recognized alone the connections of all necessary things of life and made himself a knowing and wise man through this he became inwardly free from desires more than one would compared to his fellow men therefore it was also not convenient for him and embarrassed him when he was always met with great reverence and devotion by people from different social classes and when he was called the human being with great enlightenment on the other hand as he explained embarrassedly he often had to refuse but his whole defensive attitude never worked and he could not get rid of his reputation as the buddha which was embarrassing for him and he would be grateful if he could give up this reputation furthermore he had to constantly refuse to create a large community that would extend his teaching as a basis because that was not in his mind he may well have a few faithful of both sexes who are constantly around him and he would look after many followers of his de- doctrine but he does not want to do anything more in this direction but to keep the whole thing as an open learning community because otherwise a movement of believers would arise from it siddharth did not found a religious community as it is said to be a lie because he held his speeches openly and without a faith organization with individual human beings or small groups and in this way he was able to win over people from different social classes which developed into something like a traditional school of teaching which became for many a teaching of life however even during his lifetime the whole thing provoked envy enemies and evil adversaries who called him a liar and a cheat falsified the teaching cursed siddharth and used him as a conspiracy theory to make his teaching impossible as far as the teachings of siddharth are concerned it must also be mentioned that they correspond to a way of life which has various principles one of which for example clearly states that non violence or ahimsa 
should prevail among all human beings. This non-violence was originally also prevalent in Hinduism and Jainism and was also included in Siddharth's teaching. He did this because he saw how the human beings and all living beings were abused by the rulers and people in power in an evil and violent way against the rules of Hinduism and Jainism and consequently people were also killed by all kinds of events and this also happened to many other living beings who were killed senselessly and only for pleasure this was the reason for him to include in his teaching an ethical action and behavior respectively an action and behavior that distinguishes between good and evil which is indispensable and must be followed in order to be a just and true human being and in this important rule to be observed and also to be fulfilled by the human beings it is also included that a very special attention and mindfulness with regard to all values has to be paid in order to give satisfaction to the perception of responsibility integrity as well as sustainability with regard to the necessary respect only in this way could justice transparency and the cooperative coexistence of the human beings be guaranteed and thus especially the sharing of responsibility for general group related public and social concerns and needs the whole was fully and inevitably important for only in this way could the functioning of all ecosystems the planet nature and all its living beings of all genre and species of fauna and flora be guaranteed only ethical action makes the functioning of the whole of all living things possible but it requires compassion attention and mindfulness good moral discipline as well as inclination participation consideration and familiarity respect and consideration for the human beings but also for all that exists Siddharth explained that he learned to teach and control himself by immersing himself deeply in meditative thoughts which led him to find the path to himself which he then called the buddhist path because he was called buddh by his followers in this way and through his meditation he was able to find himself and his way to free himself from all suffering as well as to work out and create his teaching through which he was also able to extend the possibility of showing the human beings the way to a better life in the same way so that they too could recognize themselves and their own strength and ability and find their way out of their suffering and lead a normal life again at least this was his speech according to which he also lived and led a modest life while he also approached his fellow human beings with honest devotion pleased them treated them all equally and did them good without judging them in any way with regard to their religion faith appearance social status morality or behavior etc without despising them or treating them differently from anyone else in their dealings with one another the essence of the original teaching of siddharth gautam is to be understood as a profound thought work related to meditation in mindfulness and attention 
to the qualities of inner peace as well as to harmony righteousness and to the respect for life love justice humanity and wisdom but what siddharth did not take into consideration in his meditation method and also what has not been taught in any buddhist meditation teachings or elsewhere or whose further values have not been mentioned since then is the mother of all meditations which is the main factor of all learning namely the actual basic factor of meditation apart from what is given to the whole of the entire meditation practice in terms of meditation and its various methods this refers to the daily conscious and unconscious permanent state daily meditation which precedes all other meditations but is also unknown in all earthly meditation teachings since ancient times according to which it was never taught and not spread The permanent state daily meditation corresponds to a day awake consciousness meditation which takes place in the course of the whole time of the day in the day awake consciousness which takes place in lying sitting standing walking as well as in movement and every activity both in a conscious and unconscious way whereby the unconscious way corresponds to a level placed before the consciousness which has nothing to do with the subconscious but corresponds to a recording processing processing switching change replaying level the first and most important step of the meditation is the day mindfulness attention permanent meditation This is not only of special importance it is the most important meditation of all this is because it results in the conscious and controlled cultivation of the constantly arising thoughts and the resulting feelings which concentrate on everything and everyone what is currently being thought feelings created what is being done spoken executed and handled and what behaviors etc are being carried out through the continuous state daily meditation of the day watchful consciousness everything and anything is thoroughly controlled consciously and unconsciously provided that this meditation is practiced deliberately and consciously whereby everything that is done acted spoken said and handled is carried out completely or at least to a large extent correctly and without error if in the course of the day or after the day's work the permanent state of daily meditation is interrupted in the daytime awake consciousness for a state of rest or a rest meditation then a thought stop is necessary whereby a stay in a meditation for rest can take place 